practical journey, he took his responsibility as a president in very difficult circumstances. The aggression on our country was at its climax when it comes to its brutality. And we got to know him at that time. We got to know the aggression at that time, whereby they bombed indiscriminately with thousands of tons of bombs and missiles over the heads of our people, the towns, the villages, and invaded the country from all different areas, from all different directions, and also imposing a siege on this country and destroying all of the economic infrastructure and targeting the country in all different ways. So he came in under very difficult circumstances. Why did the enemies, and first and foremost the Americans, who had a fundamental role in the assassination of Mati Samad, why did they target the Mati Samad? May peace be upon him. First of all, this goes back to their concern regarding the effective role he played and also the influence he enjoyed amongst the people and also very much accepted and loved and respected and his influence within the framework of his responsibilities to counter the aggression. His contribution in order to preserve the domestic front on the one hand and encountering the aggression and mobilizing the energies and the capabilities from the people of the country at the official and popular level, countering the aggression. Given what the aggression posed to our country, a grave danger, the efforts of the coalition of the aggression was to invade and occupy the country as a whole and to confiscate the rights of our beloved people and to confiscate their independence and to seize control of everything. The aggression which represented a grave danger to our beloved people. So the Mati Samad had an effective, influential role and he also contributed clearly to this correct approach in mobilizing the capabilities and the resources at the official and at the popular level in carrying out this important priority in countering the aggression and also striving continuously day and night in order to preserve the stability of the domestic front of the country and to preserve its cohesion. This cause concern on the part of the enemies. So one of the most important reasons for him being targeted was this, and also his vision, or their vision, sorry, their incorrect vision that them targeting him will be one of several factors which they will use in order to break the will of our people. They were searching for anything which, according to their vision, looking for anything, any factor which could help in breaking the will of this people and breaking their steadfastness. And they tried to create a sense of despair within the broader atmosphere of steadfastness and countering the aggression. They believed that if they killed the president, the Mati Samad, may peace be upon him, given his status and given his official title, given also his effective role, they believed that this, along with other factors, will crush the morale of our people and make them fall into a state of despair and collapse. Also, their concern regarding the officials in the Arab and Islamic world, those who are free leaders, who do not submit to America, nor do they accept the rights of their people to be confiscated and their countries to be occupied and their nations to be occupied, and they cling they remain committed to the causes of the Ummah. Their fear is that in Yemen, given Yemen's geographical importance and given the effective people who have an identity of faith, they were concerned that in this country there would be someone who remains committed to the cause of the Ummah, first and foremost the Palestinian cause, the Americans and the British and the Israelis believed during all those previous phases they were actually taking note 
of what is happening now, the support of our beloved people and the official and popular stance of our country in supporting the Palestinian people, in supporting Gaza, and the operations which are currently taking place in the Red Sea and the Bab al-Mandib Strait, their concern, their great concern is that this country, given its ge geographical location, whereby it oversees the Red Sea with the Bab al-Mandib and the Gulf of Aden and the Arabian Sea, all of these straits and all of these seas which are of very great importance, the leaders in those countries and the enemies are carefully, very carefully looking at this, looking at these locations given their important strategic significance. So for this country to have a free approach, a liberated approach, committing to the causes of the Ummah, and when the enemies take the step to eliminate the Palestinian cause as part of their efforts to annihilate the Palestinian people and displace them from their country, there would be someone who would take a sincere, genuine stance in support of the Palestinian people, taking advantage of this position to put pressure on the enemies, first and foremost the Israeli enemy. This is something which the enemies spoke of. Even the criminal Netanyahu, he even mentioned this issue. He spoke about the Bab al-Mandib Strait. He spoke about the danger of there being someone leading the country in Yemen, someone who has this liberated approach and this sincere stance with the Palestinian people and a decisive stance against the Israeli enemy. And he spoke, he made statements to this effect, which were broadcast in media outlets, which were also published on TV stations. His statements or their statements in this regard are known. There are statements from Americans and also in American media outlets and British. So back then, during that phase, the enemies were thinking about these days which are currently now, which we are in currently now, because in light of the Israeli and the American and British agenda, and within the broader context of their plans, their plans at the current time and also their strategic and long-term plans, their efforts in order to eliminate the Palestinian cause completely. This exists, this issue exists in their plans and they build policies and approaches and agendas and activities and interests based on this and they think very carefully regarding the emergence and vigilance of our people and the aspirations of the people so that they be at the appropriate level of responsibility and attain their legitimate rights. This bothers them and they take action hence based on this. And so one of the motivations and also goals of targeting Marty Samad, may peace be upon him, or peace be upon his soul, was their concern that there would be leaders and whereby there would be in our country this liberated approach as he would lead the national and popular stance. So this was of great importance in the eyes of the enemies and they thought very carefully about it. They want in our country, just like in other countries, they want the official stance to always be in their service, serving America, serving Israel, being agents for America and Israel and for Britain, a stance which it was in the same American-British approach, the same stance, the same approach, the same action. And then a popular stance would emerge and they would curb this or pressure this and hence prevent another counter movement, a movement which is based on faith for our nation and for other countries in the Arab and Islamic world. 
They want agents. Their main mission is to guard the American installations and the American bases and the British bases and also protect the Israeli ships and protect the British ships and protect the American ships and if the Americans whatever they may do, whatever the British may do, and if the Israeli, British and American approach was to try and annihilate the Palestinian people and the people in the Ummah in general, and this is what we are seeing now, which is very clearly manifested in some of the mercenaries, the mercenaries who reflect clearly the same thing which the Americans reflect. Their logic is the same as the American logic. It's the same as the British logic. It's the same as the Israeli logic. Their description of the stance of our country in support of Gaza, it's the same Israeli and American and British description. There's no difference. The expressions they use, it's only a difference in language and in tone. But when it comes to the essence, it's the same. Anyone who follows the Israeli statements and the American statements and the British statements, you would find these same statements, the same stances for the leaders of the mercenaries. It's the same. No different. This is what they want. Agents they can control, whereby they are only concern is to work tirelessly with all efforts to provide security for the Israeli ships as they pass by, to send the Israelis their products and provide them with the logistical support whilst they work on annihilating the Palestinian people. And then they reflect this under the pretext of protecting international shipping. The issue is protecting Israeli ships. Hence, the Americans did not want for there to be in this country a president like the Mati Saleh Ali Samman, may peace be upon his soul, nor did they want for there to be in this country such an approach, an approach of liberation, which our beloved people are pursuing, but the enemies failed in achieving their goals. The Americans failed, the Israelis failed, and their agents, their regional agents, and their local soldiers who betrayed their nation and joined forces with them, they all failed in achieving their goal behind targeting the Mati Saleh al Samad, may peace be upon his soul. And we all see at this current phase, our beloved people and everyone in the world, we are seeing the fruits of the sacrifice and the giving and the efforts of the Mati President Samad, may peace be upon his soul, and the comrades of his journey, the other Martis over the past years, those who were Martied before him and with him and after him. We are seeing these fruits, the rewards, the strength our people have attained, the dignity they've attained, the honor, the effectiveness, the influence, and their presence and their genuine contribution in the battle of the Ummah, the battle which concerns the Ummah or the nation as a whole. Our people are doing their responsibility, are playing their role. They are present and they are contributing effectively. And the whole world heard about all of this. The enemies believed that via their criminal behavior in killing and targeting the free people from amongst our Ummah, killing leaders and peoples in the Ummah at all different levels of responsibility and positions and roles within the broader framework of the liberated stance. The enemies believe that by killing these people, by targeting these people, they would achieve their goal in eliminating any honest, sincere movement from the people of the Ummah as part of the liberated stance and approach from our Ummah. But 
They are mistaken. The enemies believe that by their criminal behavior of killing and targeting, this is a failed perspective. They are mistaken. What distinguishes the martyrs in all at all levels when it comes to their responsibilities and also the role they play and the action they take, everyone has important has an important role. Every martyr in the cause of God, in the cause of righteousness or for the sake of righteousness and for the sake of just causes of our Ummah, every Marti has their importance and their contribution is important and the rewards of his efforts and their sacrifices and their contributions these fruits and are important and tangible and so there is a very very extraordinary element with the martyrs first of all their direct practical contribution before the martyrdom then they crowned their sacrifice and their efforts it culminated in martyrdom in sacrificing the soul and oneself in the cause of god in service of the just causes to rid the ummah and also save their peoples and confront or counter tyranny and oppression and along with their direct contribution before martyrdom we have the rewards and results and the impact of their sacrifice and their previous action and their previous efforts god is the one who blesses these efforts he blesses these sacrifices in the results they achieve and in what they lead to and this is something clear and very tangible something else which is unique an important unique element with the martyrs is that remain they remain immortal as a source of inspiration setting an example motivation an impetus for others to take action when we look at the values which they showed and also the loyalty and the efforts they pursued the sacrifices they made this is important and it has its repercussions so they are a source of inspiration this in addition to their high status with god and so what they achieved what they have attained the great victory as god said do not believe those who were killed in the cause of God as dead, but rather alive with their God being rewarded. With their God, indeed, enjoying a high status, a great status, and honored in a way which no one can imagine. They are happy with what God gave them and they also await those who have not joined them whereby there is no fear for them they are awaiting the blessing from god and reward from god and god does not forget the rewards of the faithful part of the rewards is that which is achieved for the sake of the sacred goals which they adopted and embraced as they took action in the cause of God as part of the causes of, of the stances of righteousness and the just causes part of it is also what God gives them the honor God grants them the stance of our beloved people during this current phase at the official and popular levels regarding the sufferings and the oppression of the Palestinian people in Gaza and in Palestine in general this bears witness it is a clear testimony in the failure of the enemies in achieving their goals in targeting the Mati Sammam and the other comrades who were martyred what distinguishes this stance from our beloved people what distinguishes this stance at the official and popular level in our country is the integration and the comprehensive approach in all areas first and foremost the military operations many countries
are not doing what is required in any way, whether it be at the level of the Arab countries. At the same time, we have action being taken at the highest levels in our country, even at the military level. The targeting of the Israeli enemy and the naval operations in the Red Sea and the Bab al-Mandib Strait and the Gulf of Aden and the Arabian Sea, the military efforts are effective and are having a real impact. And we hope that everyone understands the effectiveness and the impact of this action. God has blessed our country by giving them a clear victory in their naval operations, by achieving a very important goal, which is preventing the passing through and the movement of the ships that are linked to Israel. This goal has been achieved completely. Over these past few weeks, not one case of a ship linked to the Israeli enemy emerged. We didn't have one such case over the past few weeks. This is a real victory, an important achievement, succeeding in completely preventing the movement and the passing by of the ships that are linked to the Israeli enemy. And this shows clearly the effectiveness and the impact of the military operations, the naval military operations carried out by our beloved people. And this has its repercussions, and it impacts the Israeli enemy. Not just the situation in Umm Rashrash, which they call Elat, in obstructing the commercial movement in the port there and how it affects the revenues of the enemy. But at a higher level, when it comes to its economy in general, the statistics, the information, the numbers prove this truth. This is something clear and tangible, and the Israeli enemy admitted to it, and others also mentioned this. In addition, when it comes to the effectiveness and the impact of this stance, the Americans, who are another branch of Zionism or the Jewish Zionist lobby, and the British, who are also another branch of the octopus of evil, the Jewish Zionist lobby, when each of these parties took action as one movement in the aggression against our beloved people, it's because the stance of our people is having a very big impact. It is having a strategic impact. It is having a real impact. And so for this reason, they carried out the aggression against our country and they got themselves involved in all of the repercussions which affect them their economic situation and also others because their ships and their warships are also being targeted ever since the beginning of their aggression against our country so they are also witnessing the same problem along with the israeli enemy because their ships are being targeted and also they, there are economic repercussions on them then, when the goal was achieved in preventing the ships linked to the Israeli enemy from passing through, despite the American-British aggression against our country, and despite all the efforts they pursued, the Americans and the British, all the efforts they pursued in order to protect the ships that are linked to the Israeli enemy and their wars and their aggression against our country, it was for this goal originally essentially. They failed. They failed, all of them. The Israelis cannot protect their ships passing through Bab al-Mandeb and the Red Sea, nor can the Americans or British, nor did they also succeed in doing this. So they all failed, and our country, thank God, succeeded in preventing the movement of the ships that are linked to the Israeli enemy. This is a victory against all of them, a victory against the evil trio, America, Israel and Britain. This is a great blessing. This is a real victory. This shows 
how our country has gained great military capabilities and is having is having an impact there is a confession to their failure at the highest levels the american president confessed to their failure in protecting the israeli ships although they express it According to the Israeli ships, they express it, they refer to ships in general, but they did not succeed in protecting the ships that are linked to the Israeli enemy, and at the same time, they got themselves involved so they can no longer, they are no longer able of protecting their own ships, ships linked to them, linked to the Americans and the British. Their leaders, their presidents, their military leaders also confessed, and their political leaders, they admitted to their failure in protecting the ships. This is a real and big victory, and we thank God for this. The action taken by our beloved people when it comes to mobilization and military readiness in large segments of the population. This is a very, very important track, and the enemy is carefully focusing on this. For this reason, in the protests which translate and make it clear and if express or reflect the popular support, the popular stance at a very large scale from our beloved people from all different walks of life and affiliations, the large presence in the protests and in the marches, this is unprecedented. We're not seeing anything like it in any other country. And continuing in this approach, despite the long time since the war began, and for people to continue to raise their voices, their presence to continue, and their focus, ongoing focus in support of the Palestinian people. This ongoing approach with this momentum is part of the correct stance, which reflects vigilance, which reflects faith, which reflects also ethics, reflects humanity, reflects humanity, also a sense of responsibility ethical, religious responsibility, the Israeli enemy, as it continues to carry out the crimes of genocide on a daily basis against the Palestinian people and its current preparations to carry out an aggression, a large-scale aggression and an infantry invasion of Rafah. In light of all this, the serious action must continue against the Israeli enemy against the savagery and barbarism and brutality and their tyranny against the oppressed Palestinian people. Today, on the day 130, on the 130th day since the beginning of the aggression on Gaza and the indiscriminate, brutal targeting of the Palestinian people in Gaza, the crimes and the aggressions against the Palestinian people in the West Bank and Al-Quds and elsewhere in Palestine are also continuing and are not stopping. And there are martyrs every day in places outside Gaza. But what the Israeli enemy is doing in Gaza is crimes of genocide and also comprehensive destruction in an unprecedented manner. So for this reason, we are intent, based on our identity of faith and our sense of responsibility and our human and ethical sentiments and values as Yemeni people we must continue with our stance and rather actually further escalate. Our actions should increase. We should not back down or tire. The Israeli enemy, as it continues with its brutality and criminality, and its soldiers and military recruits even brag about killing children. We all saw videos. Israeli female recruited soldiers brag and express pride in them killing Palestinian children. Also, Israeli soldiers bra brag and express pride about killing Palestinian people. 
A person comes out and says, I killed this person, I killed that person. They mention numbers, how many Palestinian people they have killed, some of whom are being killed in cold blood, and not just in confrontation. The Mujahideen in Palestine, they encountered the Israeli enemy, and they are fighting like heroes in an unprecedented way, in very, very difficult circumstances. But the Israeli soldiers and the Israeli female soldiers, they all express pride in killing unarmed civilians, killing children, killing women, killing people in cold blood, in mass executions. They are proud in the killing which is taking place as part of a comprehensive killing machine, the American bombs and the American missiles, which are causing all of this horrific destruction against the Palestinian people and also the bombs and the rocket or the missiles given by the British and the Germans and others who participate with the Israeli enemy and contribute directly in the crimes of genocide against the Palestinian people. They brag about this and they express pride about this. With complete brutality and criminality, the warnings, the hostile warnings of Rafah, this further increases the aggression against the Palestinian people. Rafah, whereby, according to the statistics, the announced statistics, we have around 1,400,000 Palestinian displaced people in difficult circumstances, grave sufferings, and air bombardment and killing, including the crimes of killing and the aggressions which took place yesterday and day before yesterday and today in Rafah. However, the Israeli enemy wants to do in Rafah what they did in the northern Gaza Strip and in central Gaza. They want to carry out crimes of genocide and they want to carry out complete destruction and very horrific criminality and the sufferings, the results will be much worse as a result of this large number of people there. Where could they go now after Rafah? All of the Gaza Strip is destroyed and under a siege and is targeted by air bombardment. It's a very difficult situation. So there is a great responsibility in light of this danger, this grave danger to the Palestinian people, a grave danger to hundreds of thousands of the Palestinian people in Rafah the people, the displaced, and also the inhabitants of Rafah, there's a great responsibility which the Islamic world must first and foremost take. All Muslims, they have a responsibility in front of God, a religious responsibility and a human responsibility, and a responsibility stemming from all considerations. Everyone must take serious action in order to support the Palestinian people in the injustice they are subject to and also in light of the criminality in general and also given this criminal step which the Israelis have announced that they want to carry out. The Americans, despite its maneuvering and its statements which we hear from the American president and from some American officials, the Americans are partners in all crimes of the Israeli enemy are participants, partners by their finances, by their funding, by their weapons, by managing the fight. There are some who are planning and who are also participating in managing the crimes, the crimes which are being committed against the Palestinian people, even in preparation. A very big crime and a mass slaughtering in Rafah. The surveillance, the American surveillance planes and the, America, the British surveillance planes, they are there preparing for that bloody operation which the Israeli enemy wants to carry out. They are ones which carry out surveillance, they put together the plans, they gather the information, and of course there are some who went to Palestine to directly participate, American generals and British generals, in managing the criminal operations and planning for them and providing the consultation. There are some who are working on this to prepare for this criminal step. For this reason, they are participants 
On the other hand, where is a human conscience in our Arab and Islamic Ummah? Where is the religious sense of responsibility? Where are the values of Islam? Where are the ethics? Where is the stance of our Ummah regarding the teachings of God which oblige people to stand with the oppressed Palestinian people who are part of this Ummah? It is a great crime which is being committed by the Israeli enemy against the Palestinian people. And the silence of countries as a whole and from peoples of the Ummah and peoples and them not taking serious steps. This is in one way or another involvement in that crime. So it's a very dangerous issue. Serious action must be taken, a clear stance must be taken from all different parties, first and foremost from our Islamic Ummah, Arab countries. Where is the Arab League? Even when it comes to the diplomatic track, its efforts are very weak. It has no impact. These efforts have no impact. Where are the Arab countries in general? Where are their serious efforts? So that we can sense, indeed, at the official level, there is no serious action. Also, the Arab Republic of Egypt, it also is important when it comes to Rafah. First of all, given the peace agreement which was reached between Egypt and the Israeli enemy, and also the Israeli enemy going ahead with this criminal plan against the people in Rafah and the displaced in Rafah, by doing this, they are violating that agreement and they are going beyond the Philadelphia axis. And also, under other considerations, considerations of neighborly ties, of affiliation with Islam and Arabism, and neighborly ties, under all considerations, even from the aspect of the national security, Egyptian national security, for this reason, the brothers in Egypt should take serious steps serious and should not pay attention to the American and British pressures. They should take action from a stronger stance and everyone must take a strong stance, not just them. The Arab countries, they should have a clear stance. In the Islamic world, the countries of the Islamic world should take serious, effective steps and their efforts must come together to put more pressure and they must take action as concrete steps like decisions and real stances, political stances, diplomatic stances, economic stances. There are options. There are many ways with which to put pressure, but they need to be as part of a serious step. And this is what is lacking from many regimes and governments in the Arab and Islamic world. They are silencing the popular stance, and this is dangerous. The suffering is great. There is a great level of injustice, grave dangers. And when they ignore this, or when they turn a blind eye, or when there is no action taken, when the appropriate steps are not taken, it's very dangerous. Also, internationally, and the institutions which are called upon to come in, take action when it comes to the oppression of Palestinian people, where is the Security Council, other countries, the United Nations, and other organizations and countries? Where are the serious efforts? We hear some positive stances from here or there. We are also seeing efforts being pursued at the popular level and also from some communities and some protests. This must intensify given the current dangers. The Israeli enemy is carrying out the crimes of genocide against the Palestinian people, stemming from their hatred. Their crimes reflect their hatred and their grave human bankruptcy. They kill children. Most of the martyrs are women and children. The statistics a few days ago about the martyrs, they reveal that the 
We have more than 12,000 children who have been martyred. So very horrific crime, very horrific criminality. Thousands of children who have been martyred by the Israeli enemy. And then after 127 days, two days ago, they brag and they express pride that according to their claim, they were able to make an achievement after all of this comprehensive destruction, after killing more than 12,000 children and after killing thousands or tens of thousands of Palestinian people, women, children, people, and complete comprehensive destruction and spreading or causing famine amongst the people of Gaza. They say that according to their claim, they made an achievement by retrieving two prisoners who, according to some popular sources were held by a Palestinian family. They brag about this and they present this as such a big achievement. The leaders of the Israeli enemy, they exaggerate this and they consider this to be a gigantic step and a big change in the situation. It's silly indeed. It is really silly. What the Israeli enemy achieved is a very large record, a criminal record, a very, very ugly criminal record, a criminal record which they are committing are live. The whole world is witnessing these horrific crimes, these very horrific crimes. When it comes to achievements, there are no achievements. What kind of achievement for an enemy which makes hospitals like the Nasser Hospital, which now is a main target for the aggression in the military operations, and they go towards it and they consider this as great military achievements, killing children according to them, they consider consider it to be a military achievement, targeting hospitals and killing medical teams or medical personnel. For them, this is a medical, these are military achievements, a low-level enemy. And they are committing the worst crimes, which are clear, according to the admission of the whole world. And then they present it and they promote it as if all of this all of these acts are military achievements. They continue with this with this criminality without any shame. Why? As we said in previous speeches, because the Americans are parties with them in this, and so are the British. And the American role, it is the main role in the continuation of the Zionist criminality and any criminal step, whatever step this may be. The Israeli enemy would not go ahead to invade Rafah and do in that area what it did in northern Gaza and central Gaza. It will not do this except by relying on the Americans. If the Americans try to trick the people by issuing some silly statements, indeed really silly statements, all of this destruction was done as a result of American bombs and missiles. All of these sacrifices, all of these casualties, victims, thousands, very, very high numbers, women and children who were killed with American bombs and American missiles. And the planning and the contribution in managing the criminality America is an effective partner in all of this via these factors, the crimes committed against the Palestinian people. The Americans and British are partners, even their aggression against the country. This comes within the framework of protecting Zionist criminality and supporting the Israeli enemy and participating with the Israeli enemy because the Yemeni front is a front that is confronting the Israeli enemy, supporting the Palestinian people in Gaza. And the Israeli enemy opened a front there, or they opened the front in order to support the Israelis, the Zionist crimes. However, despite all this, the aggression and the Israeli tyranny, which the Americans or which America and British are part of, despite all of this, we will continue all our actions in support of the Palestinian people. And we strive, as we said, we strive for this to increase at all levels.
Our operations in the Red Sea and the Babel Mandib Strait and the waters overseeing or the waters which our country oversees, these are legitimate operations. They are to support the Palestinian people in Gaza who are living under a siege. They are preventing food or medicine from reaching them. Some children and women and people in Gaza are dying of hunger. Some of them are forced to eat the remains of animals. Our human conscience and our identity of faith and our values and our dignity and our freedom don't allow for us to stand and watch these grave sufferings. If we were to be silent and stand and watch and turn our turn a blind eye and submit to the American threats or the incentives the American gave in exchange for us stopping our operations, this would mean being partners in crime. This would mean being partners in the American and British and Israeli crimes. Our country will continue with its operations in support of a Palestinian people as long as the aggression and the siege continue, as long as food and medicine is not allowed to reach the people in Gaza, our operations will continue. We will not care. We will not be impacted. We will not back down as a result of any American designations. The mother of all terrorism, the roots of terrorism, the source of terrorism is the Jewish Zionist lobby and the three branches, the evil trio, America, Britain and Israel. Criminality and terrorism in its worst forms, in its ugliest forms, are represented by the crimes which the Israeli enemy is committing against the women and children in Gaza. Crimes committed by American bombs and American missiles. This is the criminal brutal terrorism, women and children who are being killed by America's bombs and America's missiles, hundreds of thousands of displaced people who are suffering from hunger, some of whom are dying of hunger, and some of them, some of the fathers can't sleep because of the cries of their children who are suffering from hunger. This is the Te criminal terrorist, brutal terrorism. America is not in a status which allows it to designate others and name others because all forms of evil and criminality and tyranny, all of them can be applied to its hostile policy and its criminal and its crimes, its documented clear crimes. It deserves all different descriptions of tyranny and terrorism and criminality. And at the same time, we have to have practical stances against all those who sponsor this criminality and this tyranny. So designations will not change our stance. We will also confront the American-British aggression. Their strikes against our country will not achieve anything and they confess to their failure in protecting the Israeli ships and recently they confess to their failure in protecting their own ships. The more they escalate, the more they lose. And this had repercussions and results more and more. The correct solution so that the conflict doesn't expand in the region is to end the crimes against the Palestinian people in Gaza, to send food and medicine, which is a righteous, just demand, human demand, according to all considerations, according to international laws, according to rights, human rights, child's rights, women's rights, all rights. It's the right of the Palestinian people of Gaza to receive what they need from food and medicine and hum anything, all basic human necessities. Why are you against this? Why are you preventing this from happening? And why are you expanding the conflict to prevent food and medicine from reaching the people of Gaza? Isn't this criminality and terrorism and tyranny and creating problems and expanding the scope of the conflict? And what right do you have? You have no right to do this. So we underscore that we will continue 
our acts in support of the Palestinian people, all of the actions which we are taking in this direction, the military operations, the naval military operations, the operations targeting the Israeli enemy, the large widespread actions and movements with all our capacity, we will not spare any efforts and we reassure all the other countries because the Americans from day one have been trying to spread concern amongst the other countries and are trying to fabricate the clear truth regarding the naval war operations. They are trying to say that it aims, it targets all ships. They are lying and they know they're lying. For this reason, to all countries of the world, except for America and Britain and the Israeli enemy. Your ships are secure from our, from our perspective, pass through Bab al-Mandib and the Red Sea securely. You're secure, you're safe. Be confident on this from our side. If there is anyone who poses a danger to you, it's the Americans. Don't be afraid of us. Our stance is clear. We are targeting the ships that are linked with the Israeli enemy. And then, because the Americans and the British got themselves involved in the aggression against our country in order to protect the ships of the Israeli enemy and the ships linked to this enemy, as a result of this, Jeb ships became targets. That's it. The other ships can pass through safely pass through safely. Be reassured when it comes to us. The Americans are the source of anxiety and danger. They are striving to transform the seas into a war zone, and this causes concern for other countries, for the rest of the countries, and they want to push the problem to them. So all countries must be aware of responding to their calls. Our approach in any escalation or in any practical steps are in this direction against the Israeli enemy and countering the American and British aggression, which is in order to support the Israeli enemy. The other countries, the other nations, the other interests for other countries and nations are not a target for our operations nor for our escalation. This includes what was said in some media outlets about our intention to target the cable lines reaching the region, the internet cables. We don't have any such plans to target the cable lines reaching the countries of the region. Our approach is clear is to take action against the Israeli enemy and then because the Americans and the British got themselves involved in supporting the Israeli enemy, we are countering them. There is no intention to target the cables in the sea which reach the regional countries. The enemy's efforts, the ongoing efforts to tarnish the stance of our people or our country this is part of their war, and if there was anyone doing this action, agents working for them in Arab media outlets or some mercenaries, they are part of the war of the enemy. They are branches and tools of the enemy. So they are taking action as part of the war of supporting the Israeli enemy in tarnishing any stance in support of a Palestinian people, tarnishing the stance of Yemen, of Hezbollah, of the Iraqi people and the Mujahideen in Iraq, also tarnishing the axis of resistance as a whole. This is part of the war of supporting the Israeli enemy against those who support the Palestinian people in Gaza. And so there there must be vigilance regarding this fact. It is that clear. For us, we as a Yemeni people, our responsibility based on our identity of faith and our Quranic culture and based on what we owe to the martyrs and the martyr president, the leader, some man, may peace be upon their souls, is to continue to stand with steadfastness, continue with this stance, because it is our right stance to continue to commit to the causes of our ummah, first and foremost, the Palestinian cause and Al-Aqsa Mosque. We will spare no efforts for this sake. Another issue is the slogan 
which was repeated by the Mati Samad, may peace be upon his soul, which is one hand protects, another hand builds. This is something which we also owe. It's a burden on the shoulders of the leaders of a country and the people. Everyone must take action within this context. God willing, I will be speaking next Thursday. We pray to God that the Mati Samad will achieve the highest levels and we pray for the souls of all the martyrs and for the recovery of the wounded and to liberate our prisoners and to enable victory. He listens to the prayers and may peace be upon you all. Okay, speech uh, by uh, Yemen's Ansarullah leader, Abdul Malik al Houthi highlighted what he said. He was actually commemorating the Yemeni president, Saleh al-Samad. Then he also shifted to Palestine related